What is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the AFC No Career Mode here on FIFA 22. In today's episode, we will be taking on Hartlepool in the Papa John's Trophy in the first game. Second game of today's episode will be against Rotherham in the league. Jam between those two fixtures is deadline day and we may have some more business to be doing. We're still looking to bring in maybe another wise man and as we approach this game, we get a bid. For Billy James, 1.4 million from Young Boys. We really can't refuse him going to a European side like Young Boys. We've denied bids from Wickham in the past and uh, higher bids as well. So we'll negotiate the, the deal for Billy James here and see if we can maybe get a little bit more money for him. But we can't really say no to this kind of move for our players at this stage in our career. And it's looking like the, the revolving door of players from our first team and our squad in general leaving us. Um, is going to continue here and Billy James could be the next one on his way to find success elsewhere 26 year old striker 68 rated we'll ask for 2 million they've had 1.5 we'll counter um, we'll ask for 1.8 million flat and see what they think to that surely they're going to come up a little bit they do and they accept 1.8 million for Billy James he could be on his way out of the club is that David Wagner? Nice to see you, mate. It is. Hartlepool then in the Papa John's Trophy up next for us. And uh, we are going to be simming this game. Not quick sim. We're going to sim and maybe jump in if we need to. Here's the lineup we're going to go with, though, for this one. Myers will start in goal. Araujo will come in at left back. Gale, Doyle, Hubbard in the back. Kent right mid. Hunt, Adeniran and Aldeeb on the left. Hyde and Atkins start up front for us. I think and I hope that we've got the quality out there on the pitch to do the job without having to jump in here. But we'll see how that goes. We are going from left to right purple dots to start off with. And we've got blue dots, which makes it a little bit more difficult to distinguish between the two sides. But early chance here for us, five minutes in. And on the edge of the box still in the area. And the shot goes over the bar. Early chance now for Louis Atkins. Can't convert. with the ball on the edge of the box 20 minutes almost up here and the possession for the away side can't quite nick it back from them they're going to work it inside the area and they're going to score here Crawford will give them the lead and starting to boo here the performance so far not been good enough for their expectations that's better though as we get the ball out wide into the box it comes and into the back and there it goes Louis Atkins has the equaliser for us Cross from Frankie Kent from the right-hand side. And we have the equaliser half an hour in. Half time whistle is approaching here. And a bit of defending for us to do. But we've got possession now. And we get it forward. Frankie Kent inside. Nicholas Hyde on the edge of the box. Finds Adeniran off the post. Back into play. And that is the last chance of the half. It is 1-1 at the break. Could have been 2-1 if we just took that chance right at the death there. But level with Hartlepool. Bit of space here. Chance for Hartley Pool in the box. If we find the room they need to get a shot away. We've got men in the faces, and that's good defending in the end. Doing an off ball forward. And Nicholas Hyde get a shot away. It's over the bar. All that wide for Hartley Pool. Ten minutes to play. Thinking about maybe jumping in here, but we do have an attack. We'll let this finish out before we jump in. It's going to go out wide. With the ball in the box, maybe. Come back to the right back and then crossed into the box. Cleared away. Might still fall for a purple shirt. Will retain possession well. Edge of the box now. Decent. Big room. Chance. Saved. It's going to be cleared away for Hartlepool. They get lucky. And with minutes left on the clock. We're not going to have time to jump in here, but there was one last chance for Hartlepool to maybe go and win it. It would just be a point. If the game ends a draw, Hartlepool with the last chance will clear it away. And it is going to be a 1-1 draw and the Papa John's Trophy. Louis Atkins gets in our goal after we go behind. Responded well, but didn't get the job done. Deadline day upon us here. And as you can see, our business so far, 1.5 million spent on players in. And 13 million for players out. Reggie Stevens, of course, making up the bulk of that. Players on the way out might be about to be added to for Billy James here. Still negotiating with young boys. And there you go, confirmation that he will join Young Boys at 1.8 million, 1.2 added to the transfer funds. And we will have some business to be done 
on deadline day. We're still looking at the left midfield spot to improve. But now we might also need a striker. Nicholas this hard will step into that spot for now. Again, as we said, we could easily start him. But it does leave us a little bit more exposed as far as rotation options go. So maybe looking to bring in another player to either rotate and start Nicholas Hyde or maybe just bring another striker in. Let's see what there is about. Last episode, we did start scouting Sylvester Jasper at Alex Mighton. And uh, we're not actually going to be able to get full scout reports on either of these guys. And I'm not going to know how much to bid either. We haven't got that far into the scouting. Still too long to go. And we need now to make a decision on deadline day whether to sign somebody. We do still have uh, Jacob Luna the wide man, the Spanish guy on the free agents. Cyrus in Somerville as well, I was looking at this guy, but he's actually unwilling to relocate at this time, similar to Mighton. So it does leave that, the option for that left midfielder spot. We'll go a look and sign Luna on a free, 69 rated. Will be similar to the Araujo situation. We're not going to try and use him too much. We're just going to try and maybe bring him in slowly rather than rushing him into the first team and throwing him in there because he's higher rated than players we already have or players we're about to bring in we're given an important spot nonetheless we'll have a five-year deal as well signing long term no release clause and he wants 1.7k we'll accept that why not welcome Luna to the club that signing secured gives me a little bit more leeway to go and sign Jasper now because even if Jasper doesn't quite perform to the levels we need him to we still have the backup of Luna to fall on so with Billy James moving on who was a guy who played both striker and out wide for us. Jasper seems like an immediate replacement. Striker or left mid are the two spots he can play. We don't know exactly how much we're going to pay for him, but we're going to go ahead and figure that out right now. So the deal that I've plugged up here is a £1.5 million bid plus Luca Ford, who is a 24-year-old left winger who we haven't utilised at all so far. And... Similar really to the bid that we did for Kahinde, 1.5 million plus a player. I'm not exactly sure, like I said, how good Jasper is, but I feel like this is a decent amount of money for him. And hopefully Fulham can either negotiate or just say, yes, that's a very good deal and we overpay a little bit. And they say, fine, that's good with us. So maybe we have overpaid a little bit for Jasper here, but we're willing to take the risk. We've got the money. Kahinde, we paid... The same amount for, so if we get a similar level of player, I do believe that's going to be a good deal for us. And we've also got a guy in on a free who can do the job there as well. He's asking for rotation, which is good for us. A four-year deal we will take as well at 21, still very young. No release clause. He, he wants five grand, which is more than Luna asked for a minute ago. And he will join the club and become a uh, new signing on the left-hand side. We'll have a look at exactly how good the deals are right now. Did we just panic by there on deadline day? Potentially. Let's go ahead and look at the players that we have pulled in here. Jasper is 65 rated with 85 pace. So very quick. Doesn't really improve too much on Mitchell Lawson. But he will join us and join the bench there. We'll swap him in for Mitchell Lawson. Now that is decent business, but I do believe that we still need a striker. So I'm going to have to go out now and try and find somebody who could possibly play up front for us. I'll go to the transfer hub and have a look, see if there's anybody on here who is a potential signing. I might be making a bit of a mistake here, but panic buying is something that I've got an art form in. Something I've got a, a PhD in and... We're looking to bring in Ashley Fletcher on loan. We'll do actually we'll try and load to buy just to see whether they say to that. Okay, so they only want to do a loan, which is fair enough, we'll do that. We'll do a one year loan for the rest of this season, and that sounds good to them. Now he's got huge wages and we'll pay half of them. They agree. Now whether he accepts this deal or not, it's huge on deadline day. He's not going to get first team football at Watford this year. He's a League One striker at best when he's in his good form. He can really challenge for that top goal scorer spot in this division. He's somebody who I'd love to bring in. I'm hoping that that deal can get done over the line. Just alone for the season will be fantastic. Let Nicholas Hyde come through a little bit more. and He can go and score some goals up top with Berahino. We'll see how it progresses over the next few hours on deadline date. 
money's declined, and that is terrible news, alongside the news that our captain Sam Goodwin is being taught by a Portuguese outfit that we are going to reject. It's 3.3 million. If it was a bigger outfit, I'd be looking at maybe selling him, but Goodwin is staying. He's our captain. He's not going anywhere. Well, one of his teammates from Watford, Josh King, we don't know how much they'd want for him, but his contract is running out at the end of the season. And if we're going to break a record transfer fee, we want to go get a proven goal scorer in Josh King. I'd, I'd, I would try a loan, as we just did a second ago, but it didn't work. And I feel like Josh King had turned down a loan move to the club. If we try to buy him, I feel like there's more chance of us getting mid-deal done. So we're going to go ahead and look at bringing in Josh King on deadline day. It's a rash move. It's come out of absolutely nowhere. But there's a chance that we can get a deal done. Now, I don't know how much they're going to want. And in all honesty, I'm scared what to offer for Josh King. I feel like whatever we say, they're going to turn down, walk out the door and say, not a chance. We've got 13 million. Do we go and... How much do you pay for Josh King? With his contract running low, he's 30. He's not really going to get any better. I'm tempted. Oh, it's big. It's huge. Is it too much? Is it enough? The question is about to be answered. We're making a statement and they've come back and they want Oakley Booth plus 2.7 mil, which we're not going to be doing, but it gives us some sort of idea as to what they're looking for, a midfielder. Now, we do have some midfielders that we could possibly offer to them, though I'm not too fond of any of them, actually. Taking a second look at the idea, I'm probably just going to offer the money and we'll go to four and a half million. Is that going to be enough for Josh King? They say it is. It's a huge amount of money that we're about to spend on a player. It's a statement to the rest of the league if we can bring him in. Josh King, will he sign for AFC Newark? Can he be the man to fire us up the division with Sider Berahino up top? It's an unlikely pair to be starting up front for AFC Newark. I never envisioned this starting the career mode. He only wants a one-year deal, and that means his contract will be out of at the end of the summer. So I'm going to make it two, and he accepts. We don't want to just sign him and then lose him in the next couple of months. He signs a deal somewhere else, and there's no interest in performing for us anymore. Now, here comes a big question. How much is he going to want a week? He's definitely going to be on huge sums of money, and we don't really have the finances to be paying guys huge wax of money and how much he's going to be willing to sign on this deal but we'll offer him 400k on top of the 20k wages and he says that's fine so we will sign josh king on deadline day we was looking at dwight gale possibly being he's 75 rated ashley fetcher has turned down the opportunity to become our star man and his teammate josh king has said he will accept that role. In he comes. Up front. We lose Billy James on days before the transfer deadline day slams short. And we panic by our way to Josh King up front. Sider Berahino, Josh King, Kosinka Hinde, Oakley Booth, Albie Stanley and Sylvester Jasper become our new attack and midfield. The squad is starting to sharpen up. We'll hopefully see out the rest of deadline day without any more changes and we will get into a game against Rotherham pretty shortly. The rest of deadline day went by with no news as far as our club is concerned and we get to our next league game against Rotherham who are in 8th right now. We are in 3rd after 6th game. Good start to the season looking to continue. New players going to be involved today. Hopefully they can gel straight into this team. And we have a problem immediately with signing Josh King. He's gone on international duty and as a League One side, we... Oh, what are you doing? Of course he can't play. That's why I'm trying to take him. What are you doing? Fine. I guess I can't take him out of the team because he's on international duty, which is kind of what I'm trying to do. Um, I guess the, the AI will decide who starts up front for us in this game. Hopefully it's Nicholas Hyde. Oh, Rotherham will get his kicked off here then. On the way in league action, it is Nicholas Hyde who got the spot up front, thankfully. And uh, Oakley Booth has won this ball back for us immediately. 
in the midfield. We'll wait for Kahinde to get upfield. And here he is, and a good start to this game is what we need. And listen, Kahinde could be about to provide something. He's going to be tackled by Harton, but wins a throw in deep in the half. Smith out wide with a lot of room is Bola and can get into the box here. And we have fell over each other at the front post. And defensively, we've collapsed here against Rotherham. Early goal through the legs of Jukonski and Rotherham lead. Free kick and a cross in position. Shouldn't cause too much danger. In towards the head and Sam Goodwin is going to be good enough to deal with it. I'll be Stanley can find Berahino. He finds Sylvester Jasper. His ball out will find Kehinde. He has the pace to punish teams. Kehinde gets the ball across. Albie Stanley, oh, he's absolutely shanked it. What an opportunity for Albie Stanley. And Kahinde is running back again here. And can find a pass to Oakley Booth and finds Nicholas Hyde. Hyde thinks it across underneath it, headed away. Stanley back in. It's not going to be forced over the line and away by Rotherham. Oh, knocked forward into the channel for Ming Tang. This pass backwards off Burn and Albie Stanley gets a toe in and then we'll find Oakley Boob that's nice football Oakley Boob outside him is Kehinde he needs to just stay away from his man and use his pace to get away he will there's two players at the back post who can find one it's Stanley who again can't take his chance at the back post I was thinking about making a couple of changes at the break but we are going to stick with the 11 that was on the field for the first 45 for the next 10 minutes or so just give them a chance to go and put right what they haven't been able to so far be Stanley with the two clear cut opportunities and similar opportunities they were that he couldn't get right. First one, too much power. Second one, not enough. Is the third one the goalie lock zone for Albie Stanley? Hopefully, in the second half, the answer to that question will be answered. And the answer will be yes, as Sino Berahino or past defensive collapse, maybe for Rotherham. Or pressure for the mistake. And the ball away. Jesse Young almost wins it back. And this time, will Oakley Booth into Nicholas Hyde. I killed to Albie Stanley. Touch and hit from the edge of the box and it's a poor finish from the young Englishman. Albie Stanley up to win that header. Nicholas Hyde up to win the header second and ball cleared away into the sky. Can Logan Hicks win that one against Gallardo? He can't, but Stanley's pressure was almost enough to nick it back for us. But rather than keep possession, Albie Stanley now will win it back for us. His ball forward. Nicholas Hyde with a first touch ball around the corner to Logan Hicks. Hicks inside to Jasper who brings it in the stride really well and will accelerate past the defender. Sylvester's ball across surely. Kahinde back post tapped in. It's a perfectly worked goal. We are level against Rotherham. Jasper and Kahinde linking up. Excuse me, Jean-Vu had only just got to that ball. I'll be Stanley. Berahino was going in behind there before halting his run prematurely. Ning Tang, pressured by Sylvester Jasper, who's won it. Tenacious work from him up the right end of the pitch. Ref, is that a free kick? It is. He's won it well. Good work from Jasper. That high, high work rate coming in clutch there as he presses and wins that ball back in a good area against Ming Tang. Wings a free kick in a good position for Berahino to deliver a ball to. And can Berahino deliver one? And it comes towards the head. It's decent. It's going to be flicked away. Kahinde will bring it down with a good first touch. And up to dink it across the face. It comes Vickers. Collects easily, no one attacking it. Back inside, Sylvester Jasper was there, but he's left it for Nicholas Hyde. Hyde in, Berahino, it falls to Jasper, and it's not going to be struck goalwards. Sylvester Jasper has put a stake down for that first team spot. Jacob Luna would need to do the same. He's got less time to impress. And Baito Sheng will give him a chance to do so here early on. There's a ball in the box. Keeper was thinking about coming. It might fall for Bryce O'Shea, who takes his chance wonderfully. This man needs a first-team spot. He just keeps on giving. The ball in from Luna attracted the attention of the goalkeeper, who made a hash of the decision. And the ball drops to Bryce O'Shea in the area, who slashes it goalwards for 2-1. Little bit of fortune. But we lead against Rotherham. Bryce O'Sheng with the goal. Lovely hit. Just hit it on target. We've got to defend here and make sure we come away from Rotherham with three points. Good defending by Sessing Young. Kehinde will be allowed to open his legs up here and motor down the right hand side. And we have got four men centrally for Kehinde to pick out. Ball in. Luna back post. Right footed. Big chance for the winger. Vickers denies him 
a debut goal. Tardo over to take it. And we find the head of Sam Goodwin. We do! And Ming Tang puts it behind for another corner. Time is starting to tick away for Rotherham, unfortunately for them. And Sido has another delivery. It's towards Goodwin again. Vickers comes and collects it. Just couldn't get there with Sam Goodwin. It's going to be a quick kick out from Vickers and the ball will drop to a red shirt. Can they create something? Four minutes added on at the end of the game. That's a poor pass and Luna is there. Bryce O'Sheng into Logan Hicks. And now Luna. Heavy touch in behind the defender. Now Vickers. And look at the press here from our attackers. O'Sheng gets something on it. It's Mitchell Lawson. Can he sort his feet out? Mitchell Lawson puts it beyond any doubt. And gets a goal that his confidence needs. 3-1 win over Rotherham. Mitchell Lawson with a dagger. Pressure high at the pitch. O'Sheng just putting his noggin in there and winning something. And the finish, really, Vickers could be doing better with. Hits it hard, doesn't he? Mitchell Lawson puts his foot through it. It's at the goalkeeper. Hits him on the shoulder as it goes in. There's too much pace on it for him. And three points confirmed in a difficult afternoon against Rotherham. Final whistle goes. Belief that promotion is on for us. Our good start to the season continues. Our squad continues to improve. There will be a debut for Josh King coming up shortly as well. Thank you for watching this episode. That is going to do it for today. I'll see you guys in the next one very soon.